I think he's done a good job, a really good job under very trying circumstances and better than some people give him credit for. And I strongly committed to his reelection. And I just regret that I, I, you know, my instinct, though, you know me, I'm, I don't think I should have to say bad things about Governor Romney personally to disagree with him politically. That was former President Bill Clinton Thursday walking back his support uh, for extending the Bush tax cuts and getting behind the president. Here to discuss is Fox News commentator Monica Crowley, who's, by the way, also just out with a new book. Like, I love this title, Monica. <laughs> what the Bleep Happened, The Happy Warrior's Guide to the American Comeback. Welcome. Thank you, Mary. Great to okay. be here. So uh, uh, former Clinton uh, pollster Doug Schoen was on this set just two days ago uh, telling me, swearing to me, that President Clinton would never walk back these comments because he's a president and he can't be bossed around like, say, a, a mayor of Newark. So what happened here? Very interesting dynamic, as always, between Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. There's a long history here. Most of it's very bitter. Uh, it seems to me that in his initial comments when he said nice things about private equity, Bain Capital, Mitt Romney, this White House came on down on him like a brick house, the way they came down on Cory Booker, the way they came down on Harold Ford Jr., Ed Rind there are some politicians who, Democrats, who are willing to speak the truth, as they have done, who might be a little bit more resistant to the White House pressure. I am kind of surprised that Bill Clinton ended up backtracking on that, but I will point this out, Mary. Subsequently, he is also then clobbered Barack Obama and some of his policies. So he went out a couple days ago and said, remember me? I'm the guy that gave you four annual budget surpluses, <laughs> meaning I'm the Democrat that was the fiscally responsible president. And then just today, he reminded Americans that median income was actually higher under him when he left office than it is today. Okay. So Bill Clinton will always find a way, Mary, to nail Barack Obama. Okay, well, let's step back from this, from this sort of ground level warfare. And I ask you a bigger question about the Democratic Party. Is it, in effect, splitting into two factions, this kind of pro-business, fiscally responsible faction represented by the Clintons and this uh, very anti-business faction uh, represented by the, the president and, and his re-election staff? It's a what great does this question. mean? It's a great question, and I actually take this on in my new book coming out in about a week. Thank you for plugging it, called What the Bleep Just Happened, <laughs> um, because it's interesting. The, the Clintons came out of the DLC, the Democratic Leadership Council. So did guys like Ed Rindell, Harold Ford Jr. And what's interesting is that the DLC actually went extinct about two years ago because there is no room for sort of centrist Democrat politics in Obama's America, in Obama's Democrat Party. And I argue that what you're seeing out of Obama, this far left kind of governance, this is not your father's Democrat Party. This is not your grandfather's Democrat Party. This is something wholly different. This is far more radical and extreme. So what you're seeing now from Rendell, from guys like Bill Clinton, is that rift. They, they have always been sort of pro-business, as you say, market-oriented and not ashamed to be that way, mainstream Democrats. They have fundamentally disagreed with a lot of what's come out of the Obama administration. And I think that break now is becoming public at the exact wrong time for Barack Obama as he heads into the reelect. Well, I want to ask you about the president's comments today very briefly. He said the private sector is doing just fine. Uh, given the very quick walk back that he had to make, uh, do you think he should be listening a little bit more to President Clinton, maybe taking some of his advice? He should be, but he won't, Mary, for the, <laughs> for the just flat out straight reason that Barack Obama is a pure ideologue. This guy is a true believer. He believes in redistributionism. This is why he has even put his own reelection on the line. This is why he was willing to, to lose so many fellow Democrats in the Congress in 2010. I mean, I, I write about this. There was an episode right before they were getting ready to pass Obamacare when Blanche Lincoln, who was one of the last remaining moderate blue dog Democrats out of Arkansas, U.S. Senator, she came into the White House and begged Obama, please don't do this. Please don't socialize medicine. Please don't nationalize one sixth of the U.S. economy. Let's do this in pieces in ways that the American people will support. And he looked at her straight in the eye and basically said, Blanche, you're crud out of luck. This is a guy who is absolutely committed to his philosophy and is willing to do everything and even risk his own presidency and not get reelected 
in order to slam this redistributionist agenda into place. He's done a remarkable job of it over the last couple of years. He might not win re-election because of it, but there's no way he's going to listen to Clinton or do the Clinton centrist model. No way.